So what I'll be doing in this video is sharing with you this full tutorial where you can create the suspended ceiling with frame lights. This is a perfect exercise for those of you who are new or want to learn parametric design. And I post videos like these every week where you can learn how to use parametric design for your design and for architecture. So I hope you're excited. If you want to download the script and find other resources, check out my website, capettydavid.com. Other than that, thank you very much for being here and let's jump right in. All right, so the first thing we'll need to do for this design is I'd like to bring in a scale person. So let me show you what, I, what I've done is I've created a scale person that I can just drag in and insert. This way I can give myself an idea of the scale of this design. And so I'll also have this model to download for free on my website. I just haven't done it yet. I will do it very soon. So now that we have a person here, now we can start and creating, start creating our design. So let's go start with our origin point and create a polyline. So first we'll go to a rectangle component. And now we can use this rectangle component to create a form. So we'll go, let's say 50 by 50. So this will be the base geometry that we'll be using for creating our script. Now we can take this and move it up. So we'll go here to move up in the Z direction. Since the units here are feet, then the number that I plug in is going to be in feet. If I want to bring it up by 13 feet, then I can just use a slider of 13 bring it up by that much. Then of, of course we can move this up and down, but what this is going to represent is the location of your dropped ceiling. So now that we have this location, now we need the location of the ceiling. So now we can do this again, copy it, so tapping alt. And now that I've copied it, I can move this one up. So this could be the ceiling height. So this is going to be the drop ceiling height, and this is the true ceiling height. And we can also convert those into surfaces. So if we go to boundary surface, we can turn a closed planar polyline into a surface. And so we can do that for both of these. So one of the things to note is we want to keep things organized. Now, sometimes if you get in the flow, it's okay to come back and organize the script, but let's start here by drop ceiling height and sometimes I just abbreviate them and then here ceiling height okay at this stage we can now take this surface and we're going to extrude it up to represent a solid roof or ceiling so we'll go here to extrude this surface, which is the base input, then we'll go to direction, same as this, so in the Z direction, but this has too many numbers. So well, what I'll do here is I'll show you. If we go to unit Z, now we want to create a set of numbers that is within the range that we want. So we can say less than six, dot, uh, less than six, There are different ways to do it. You could do it less than, or you can do six dot dot dot, 12 dot dot dot, 20. So that gives us a range limit starting at six, ending at 20, and setting it at 12. So let's bring this down a little bit. That's six feet. If we want it to be less, of course, we can lower the limit. Okay. So now let's go on to subdividing this for the suspended ceiling design. So at this point, now we have our ceiling design. Now we have also this surface. So now we need to subdivide the surface. There are different ways we can subdivide this. One is using isotrim, but we can also down or subdivide it using contours. So I'll bring in the contour component. The shape is going to be what we do the contours on. The point is where the contours start. 
and the direction is the direction in which the contours will be aligned. So we'll use this surface to plug it in. The direction, we can use the X direction. So I'll go here to X. And the point is going to be the midpoint of this, so it, it's subdivided evenly. We'll go here to Area Component. And the Area Component gives you the centroid, which is the geometrical center of that shape. Now that point has been plugged in. Now the distance is how much spacing in between them. So I'll go here to 10.5, and this will give us now the distance that we could either increase or decrease here. And now that we have this set, now we can copy this here and plug in the Y direction. Now, if you want the spacing to be the same in the X and in the Y, then you use the same slider for the distance but if you want the distance to be different in the x and y and sometimes that's the case then you want to create two sliders or or separate sliders for the y direction and a different slider for the x direction so here we'll go six and then twelve or ten and notice that when you start from the center, it evenly spaces it out. And this is also something that we can adjust. So we have, let's see, something like this where it's subdivided. Of course, we can add more subdivisions in a different direction, but this is going to be a great example for you to understand how this is done. And then later on, we can use a different kind of subdivision, not necessarily an X and Y subdivision, but we could use triangulation uh, and many different methods for that. So with this being done, now we can take that original surface and split it. So there's a, there's a component called surface split. So split surface, surface split. This is what we want to use. So what we'll do is we'll plug in that surface into the surface input and these curves into the curve input. Now notice that there's a bunch of overlaps here. And when you look at the output, we have 24 separate fragments. We want to flatten this out. This way it runs these lines as if it was one list and now we have the 48 trimmed surfaces that, as you can see, when we change the subdivisions, we actually end up with less. Now we can take this, middle click and bake, and then see that it has created. So that's a way to double check. So you can bake your output. One, two, six times four is 24. Yep, so everything is working out here. That's one way to double check. Now what we can do is see where these overlap. I want to create a point there. That way that's going to be the location where this is suspended from the ceiling. So what we'll do is go to a component here at the top where we have curve and curve intersection. And we'll plug in the first set, the second set, and we'll flatten the inputs. And the way that you know that you have some data coming in grafted is you'll see a dashed line coming into your um, component. So now that we have one of these flattened, this these points now need to move up to the ceiling so we can create a line segment. But the way to understand that is 13 minus 9 is the amount that we need to move up. So I'll go to a subtraction between 13, between 9, 
and 13 because that's the drop ceiling height and this is the max height. So now we have six feet in between. And this is what we're going to move this up by. So now I'll go here to a move component, plug in the points into the geometry input, and then this number is going to be moved up in the C direction. Now I can plug this into the movement and create a line segment that connects the two. At this point, we can take the subdivisions, we can decrease them, and whenever you have more points added, those will be projected up to the ceiling, and that is what's going to hold our ceiling or drop ceiling frame. Okay, so let's go here and organize some of this. So, group. This is going to be X subdivision and Y. X spacing. We can even hide most of this stuff to focus on the next portion which is going to be we can hide this because it's overlapping with our fragments now these we're going to offset because every time you have an offset or every time you have a surface you have a polyline that bound, binds that surface so what we need to do is offset those fragments which end up being the lines of those fragments in the negative direction because it offsets typically to the outside and so negative will be to the inside and we can give it a value of 0.15 or so okay with these two we can now create a surface between them so to do that or the other way is Create a surface between these two, or create a large surface between this, or this, and the inside. So we can do that. Boundary surfaces, we'll plug in this original surface as the input, then I'll go to the offset curves, plug them in as an input, and flatten the input. Why? Because that's going to create that surface that if we hide the fragments, we have this design. Now notice that the inside frame is thicker than the outside frame, and that's due to the fact that when you offset from an inside, you offset by twice as much. So one way to fix that is going to be to take this outer line segment and offset it to the outside as well. So what we'll do is we'll take this, that offsets to the inside, offset to the outside this original surface. So now we've offset it by the same amount, and now this becomes the input. So sometimes you don't want to go all the way to the end to unplug it, we can double click on the wire, create a relay, unplug that surface, and then use this as the input. Now we can take this and see that now it's consistent. And we can take this and extrude it down. So let's take this, go to an extrude component, and use a Z vector to move it down and I'll give it a value of like 1.5 so we can drop this thing here but now it's going up and we actually want it to go down so we'll go here to negative and at this stage 
we have the drop ceiling and if we still have the offsets to the inside we can also create a surface here so i'm going kind of quick here i'm copying that boundary surface and we're going to extrude it down so if this is by point one or by one then we'll just take this copy it and use this input to extrude it not by one but by less So here you can see the drop ceiling design that are it's composed of just offsets and extrusions and subdivisions. So I want to finish detailing this a little bit more. So let me show you a few other things that we can do to this. Okay, so at this stage, I'm moving things around and I see a bit of flickering. That means that there's overlapping geometry. So I want to make sure that I'm only previewing the solids at the end. And one of the things I like to do at this stage is give them some color. The reason why is because you can't really tell the difference between the outer frame and the inside panel so this is where i will go to a custom preview and a custom preview is nothing more than uh, telling these objects to have a specific color so the custom preview this object will go into the geometry and then we can bring in a color swatch there are other ways that we can bring in colors but this is a simple way that we can visualize the difference between the panels and the frame now even here it's getting a little bit difficult to see the difference between the outer frame and the inside so i'll also do this since we don't really care about the input for this one i like to typically go to wire display hidden this way i can place this anywhere and it won't really affect or get in the way of my script you can also take this down here and copy another one and use this as the input now we can change this color to be something different so we can see the difference here at this stage we can continue to change some of these parameters and we can see that it will continue to update okay so what i want to do is label these so this is going to be the frame or no the panel height and this is going to be the frame height The other thing we want to make sure that we take care of is what if we use a shape that is not a rectangle. So if I double click here, which is the input of the base geometry, if we use a different base geometry, will we get the same result? And this is something that is very useful because we want to make sure that when we plug in whatever surface, that it'll work not just with the rectangular one. So now I'll use this rectangle. I'll go here to a curved component and I will bring this into Grasshopper so I can use this. So I'll go here to set one curve and use that as the input. As you can see, it subdivides it as well. Now the only thing that's different is that the centroid or the center point is a little bit different, but notice that it develops it regardless and we can also move these points to adjust it further now we're seeing that there could be some issues here but for the most part the way that you would create the suspended ceiling is you create a rectangle or a polyline then we can go to this curve set one curve and that becomes your base geometry so it's really useful in that sense where you can apply any polyline and do the script to it. 
but I also want to see what happens if I use something like a circle. You notice that there are some issues here and see if it has to do with the size. So depending on how big the sphere is and what happens with some of these smaller panels, it will work or not. Um, that's just something to be aware of. Also, we can increase the spacing. And this will also fix some of the issues because the larger the space is, you're going to have less issues with intersecting corners here that will sometimes when you offset this a little bit more than you're allowed, then the whole thing won't work. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go lastly to something like a NURBS curve. And then we'll use this, plane our surface, or not even plane our surface, we could just use that curve as our input. And like I mentioned earlier, the spacing is really what's making it work or not. But at some point, when you find the correct spacing, you can get them all to work. The larger the space is, I think it tends to work a little bit more just because you can offset those curves and it will work a little bit better. Cool. Okay, so let's go back to our original rectangle. I'll leave this so you can apply any curve to it. And the other last thing I wanted to share is let's say you were to bake this, we're going to decrease the spacing this way. We'll just say every eight feet, every eight feet. And I'll delete these examples here. What would be really cool about this design would be using these panels as emissive material. This way, those become uh, light. And then here in the X and Y, we can also play around with the direction that these contours are taken. So if you wanted to use a different shape, that's where we can use a different vector. Like so, we can use a line segment as a vector and this other line segment as a vector. And we can bring in those curves. So if I go here to a curve component, bring in this curve as one of them copy it and use this as the other one set one curve now these two can be the directions in which the contours are taken so you're not stuck with an x and y you can also change the specific direction depending on how what direction this is and if you want to add an additional you can go to one more Copy this, set one curve and add that to a direction. Now what happens is we only have two here, but I'm pretty sure that if I add this direction, this one, yeah, it's only going to work with two because that's how we set it up originally. But as you can see, these are the cool things that we can do with the script is change where they sit. We can kind of randomize it, rotate it. But ultimately, if we want to just divide it in the, in the X and in the Y direction, we'll leave it like this. And in the future, I'll probably make a script of one where you can change the directions. That way you can have an option that does that. So with this, being done here. Um, this will conclude the tutorial. I'll probably do a render of this so to see what it looks like with the lights.
And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to answer those questions for you. And I post videos like these every week. So if you want to learn more about parametric design, make sure to subscribe and follow me for more. And check out the website if you want to download the script and check out other resources. So thank you very much for being here. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you on the next one.